Dyslexia is a learning disorder that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how they relate to letters and words. Also called reading disorder. Nope, 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 nope. Also called reading disability. <laughs> dyslexia affects areas of the brain that process language. Bit. Bit. This means not ton. an inability to sound out the pronunciation of an unfamiliar word. Shut. Just. It also means difficulty seeing Thing. and occasionally hearing similarities Roar. Roar. and differences in letters and words. Mispronouncing names or words or problems retrieving words. All of this is great to know, but if you are unfamiliar to what dyslexia really is, and I mean really is, leaving behind these clinical definitions and examples are part of it. How do I know all of this? Well, I'm dyslexic. And so are they. I want you to hear from real dyslexic people to understand what this disability really feels like. Dyslexia can be something as simple as being unable to tell the time. That's right, I can't tell the time. It also... no. <laughs> Two, three. It's also not understanding how 75 cents can be an equivalent of three quarters of a dollar. But what does it feel like? Dyslexia for me is seeing letters when backwards moving around in a sense. That's how it looks like, but how can I make you really understand how the letters move? I know they don't fly off the paper. So let's look at the alphabet. There are many similarities. Ends turning into U's. The letters, they're exchanging. It's like that, but faster, just like a glitch. Imagine sitting in a classroom every day lost. Not knowing what's going on. The teacher's speaking so fast. And you're so confused. What about when the teacher asks a question? You feel like everyone knows the answer. All their hands are up. And you eventually give up on answering because you know it's, you know whatever you say, it's probably gonna be wrong. An example of my childhood when I realized that I was different, um, there are so many examples, <laughs> but I think it, it always goes back to my classroom experiences. Because 
those were the most buzz that impacted me the most. It, it stood out the most. Um, I couldn't do long division to save my life. I could not remember the sequence where, you know, one minute you go left, one minute you're right, one you add, you divide. What? It was all a big mix up to me. So sequencing was difficult. I just didn't know what what to do, where to go. I had the number on the outside, the number on the inside, but what did I have to do? And I remember her saying to the class, just berating me and saying how she can't even do a long division sum, a simple sum, you know? Um, she can't even add or, or, or multiply. And then we got, we had corporal punishment in those days. And, we, and she lifted up the back of my skirt and I got two lovely rulers, <laughs> you know, in front of the class. But the humiliation of being called out in front of a classroom to spell a word or to do a, a sum or to give an answer and when you can't you freeze and when you can't answer the names that you're called and the things that you're told it's devastating you know so those examples are what stay with me for life Part of the experience of you know, studying and trying and doing your best and doing as much as you can do and then still not achieving what you want or still getting where you want to be, it feels defeating sometimes. Being taught in language, um, oh let's see spelling, I would get my spelling, um, not be able to remember, would revise. And when it came to reproducing what I learned, it would be something totally different. Part of you, well, part of me at least, I don't know if that is it for everybody. You get used to it. You understand the feeling and you know that no matter how much work or effort that you could put in sometimes, you still don't necessarily get where you want or get where you want to be and it feels defeating honestly. You hide the shame, you hide the disappointment on the faces of the parents when they see your report cards, you hide your struggles, you hide your sense of why aren't I good enough, why aren't I like everybody else, why aren't I smart. <sighs> and you don't want to tell anybody about it, you don't really want to talk about it in a sense and you don't bring it up, you don't discuss it. Knowing that sometimes you study and you try and you put in like all you can put in and do as much as you can do and then it still doesn't turn out the way you want, it's not a fun feeling. All these things go deep inside of you and, and it stays there because it doesn't matter how much you try. You just seem to just not be able to reach that top, you know, or not be able to reach. And then you carry it around like a big emotional bag. And yes, as an adult, I still feel those, th when I talk about it and I look back, I still feel the pain. So we dyslexics carry a lot of emotional baggage. But the hardest part, is that no one can really tell that you are dyslexic. Look at these children running and playing. You would have no idea one of them has it. Unless I point them out to you. They're lost in a crowd with a disability many people don't even think about. But why not? In 
In Trinidad and Tobago, 15% of people are dyslexic. That's 150,000 people. So then, why don't more people know about it? Well, that's easy. It's because we're invisible. You can't see us. Therefore, you never think about us. It never crosses your mind that one of us is struggling. Or confused. Maybe even a little lost. In my opinion, the most frustrating part about being dyslexic is what people think dyslexia is. Yes, I mean you listening right now. Many people believe that being a dyslexic means you cannot read. But look, I'm literally reading right now. Hello, hi, these are words that I'm reading. Some incorrect, um, incorrect assumptions I hear about dyslexia. Um, um, dyslexia kids who are dyslexic are not intelligent. Bad dyslexics are slow, or stupid, or can't read. Um, they're not able to learn, they're not able to move on with their life um, and succeed. And that is a huge misconception. It's inaccurate because I can read. I'm not slow, I'm not dumb. And a lot of a lot of other people who are dyslexic can read as well. They aren't dumb, they aren't slow. Dyslexia has nothing to do with the child's intelligence or intellectual ability. Um, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Most dyslexic children are quite intelligent. So, if I have to say that really irks me, it does. Most dyslexic move on to lead very um, successful lives. I would tell my younger self that it will be okay. You will have some loads of challenges, but those challenges are going to make you so much stronger. What would I like to hear from my younger self? Well, one thing is that starting university and going through this whole process of everything I wanted to try to do better, get better grades, do better things, be better on an academic level and not feel like anything is holding me back or feeling a feeling of being a failure or feeling like you can't do it sometimes no matter how much work you put in. And something that I would like to hear from my older self is that you know, you made it, that you were able to do it, that you were able to achieve something. Would you change being dyslexic? No, I wouldn't change being dyslexic. No, I would not. <laughs> I would never. Because it's part of my life and it's part of me. I love who I am. I love everything about me. I love the fact that I can't spell a dictionary or I still mix up words that I want to say I am proud to be dyslexic honestly and proud because 
I want to do things, I want to do big things and create things within this world, within my future career, within anything that I do. I still cannot remember my left and my right, so I still have to say it like fight for fight. You know? I love me because that's what makes me me. I'm proud to be dyslexic because then when I achieve those things, I can say to other people who may be struggling, who may think that they can't make it or they can't do it, you can do it. What? So you did. Yeah, because I did. I would categorize dyslexia as a hidden disability. Because at the end of the day, Dyslexia has an effect on our day-to-day -day activities. It really does. It is something that we will have for the rest of our lives. But at the end of the day, like any other disability, we can be successful. You can be successful.